Welcome to r slash am I the jerk, where Karen is demanding that OP marries her. My Karen girlfriend is demanding to marry me. What should I do? My girlfriend, 24 female, and I, 24 male, have been together for just over 6 years now, since we were 18. We recently made some big strides forwards in our life, like putting a deposit down on a house and getting promoted in our careers. We practically act like a married couple, sharing finances, going on family holidays together, and enjoying the love and support of both of our families. However, she started to get frustrated with me tiptoeing around the idea of proposing and getting married. A bit of background. While she was away in university, we talked about getting engaged, and I said I would propose once she finished her degree. That was two years ago. Since then, I've been promising her that I would propose, but I just haven't followed through with it yet. It's reached a point where she's telling me that she doesn't care how it's done, she just wants to be engaged and married within a year or so. I always tell her how much I want to marry her and build a future together, but when she asks me what's holding me back, I honestly don't know. I thought the nervousness around proposing came from not knowing how the other person would react, but here she is, practically begging me to propose to her. Because of this, she's given me an ultimatum. Either I propose by the end of the year, or she breaks up with me. Am I the jerk for not proposing to her? You're the jerk. You've been leading her on for two years with promises of a proposal and it's clear that she's ready to take the next step in your relationship. She's been more than patient and has even made it clear she doesn't care how the proposal happens. She just wants to move forward with you. Your hesitation and excuses are causing her a lot of frustration and hurt. If you truly want to marry her, you need to stop making empty promises and take action. Leading her on like this is unfair and disrespectful to her feelings and the commitment that she's shown to you. Not the jerk. I understand your girlfriend's frustration, but you should never let anyone pressure you into marriage. I went through something very similar where I felt pressured to propose because of ultimatums. I thought it would solve our problems, but it only made things worse. We ended up rushing into marriage and it didn't take long for the cracks to show. We weren't ready and it led to a painful divorce. It was one of the worst experiences of my life and I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Marriage is a huge commitment that should be made when both people are truly ready not because of pressure or ultimatums. Take your time and make sure that you're both on the same page before taking that step. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or his girlfriend? Please let us know. My Karen mother-in-law wants my toddler to call her mama and my husband doesn't have my back. My husband and I have a 17-month-old son who's our first kid and our first grandchild on both sides of the family. My mother-in-law spent a lot of time thinking of her grandmother name and eventually decided on mama. This makes me uncomfortable as I am my son's mama. It feels like it's being taken away from me and I don't want to share the title of mama with a grandparent. I've expressed to my husband several times since his mom chose this name that I'm uncomfortable with it and his response has been that I'm being unreasonable and I have to get over it. To further complicate the issue, our son has a pretty significant speech delay. He's not speaking at all and his speech therapist mentioned this week that he needs consistency and calling his grandmother mama will be detrimental to his language development. It also further increases the importance of the word mama to me. When he finally says it to me, it will be such an incredible moment that signifies all the long and hard work I've put into helping him grow and develop his speech. Even after bringing the speech concern up to my husband, he still thinks I'm being unreasonable, and I'm on my own if I want to cause an issue with his mother. At this point, this is the most upsetting part, that I've expressed my feelings repeatedly and he continuously dismisses them and doesn't even have my back. I want to speak to my mother-in-law about it when I see her in person next time, but I'm terrified of potentially blowing up our relationship and being left all on my own as the crazy daughter-in-law without my husband to back me up. Am I being crazy here? For reference, his family is not Hispanic or from the southern US or anywhere similar, where grandparent mama is more common or accepted. He called one of his grandparents mama, it must not have bothered my mother-in-law, which is great for her, but obviously we're different people and I have my own feelings on the matter. I also am already in therapy for my people-pleasing tendencies and we have couples therapy sessions as well. My relationship with my mother-in-law is otherwise great and I love her a lot. She's not the overbearing type at all, so this is totally out of left field. Yes, she wants it pronounced like regular mama, not ma-ma or me-ma. I have overheard her babbling mama-mama to my son and explicitly saying, I want him to say my name first. She's brought mama apparel and mama jewelry and other such items that I thought were clearly meant for new mothers. I'm just so confused where this is coming from, but I will set the boundary that this is not okay. 
The larger issue is that this is just another instance in a marriage where I don't feel my feelings are respected. It's exactly what I'm in therapy for, learning to build my confidence and self-esteem and how to stand up for myself. My therapist agrees with me that this is a reasonable boundary by the way, but I entirely shut down the idea of confronting mother-in-law at the time because I was too scared. I've made a lot of progress since then though, and I feel more ready now. Getting confirmation here that I'm not crazy gives me the last push of confidence that I need, but I'm really sad that my husband doesn't see it that way. I want a life partner who's my cheerleader and supporter, who's proud of me for making these changes and setting boundaries for the first time in my life, and it hurts me that I don't have that. Typing this all out helped me see why I feel the way I do, and I'll be talking some more with my husband before my conversation with mother-in-law. I may show him the comments here if I have to. Thanks for confirming that I'm not crazy. First, you're not being crazy. The professional speech therapist advised against it. Have you told your mother-in-law what is recommended? Granny is not mama, you are. She's being unreasonable. You mention you're in therapy for people-pleasing. Time to put some of what you've learned to work. Time to tell the marriage counselor your husband has no backbone with his mother. Mother-in-laws don't get to choose mama as their name against the mother's wishes, and weak husbands should not be allowing it. If he doesn't get his act together and rein her in, she will continue to overstep and he will continue to let her. You're not overreacting. This is the hill that I would die on. Stand up for yourself firmly. This is unacceptable. I will not allow it. You fix it or I will. But if I have to do it, you won't like how it's done. The problem with people-pleasing is everyone gets to be happy except you. No one cares if you light yourself on fire to keep them warm. If your therapist doesn't back you up, find a new one. Update 6 months later He eventually told her that she needed to choose a new name as I'm Mama in my son's speech therapy sessions and their solution is that her name is now Mama Joe. I've overheard her say, I want him to say my name first. I don't want to give up Mama because he's going to say that before any other name, etc. multiple times. I feel like I'm living in crazy town and I'm going insane. The new name is literally not any different whatsoever, especially considering the justification of why she wants to be Mama so badly. When my toddler finally does say Mama, he's two but speech delayed and he can't make the M sound yet. It's going to be for me, his mother, and me exclusively. I've given up on trying to convince my husband to get on my side. I'm going to speak to my mother-in-law directly next time I see her in person, but it's going to be a big blow up and I'm really upset my husband still can't see why my feelings are hurt by this. I think more than anything else, this has become a massive marriage issue between us. He has a habit of often invalidating my feelings and telling me that I'm overreacting. And to be fair, I am a very sensitive person. But this situation has proven to me that even if I'm being the most reasonable person in the world, he will still consider it overreacting. I'll finally stand up to my mother-in-law myself, but I just wish my husband had my back. Update. Mama Jo is now Nana. My husband messaged her saying the speech therapist says she needs to pick a new name. I followed up with a video chat saying it's not really about the speech therapy, it's about me and how I feel about it, and she was totally understanding. So, problem finally solved. It just took me two years to grow a spine. As far as the comments calling for divorce, blaming me for being in an awful marriage, etc. Yes, I'm aware of my massive self-esteem issues. Thank you for lighting the fire that I needed to at least resolve this finally. I'm in lots of therapy to undo my people-pleasing. I'm a major work in progress. We're in marriage therapy to navigate the issues that have come up after 15 years of me sweeping my feelings under the rug. This is hard, but I'm trying my best. Am I the jerk for telling my boyfriend it's weird he uses his hazards while braking in traffic? My boyfriend, 28, and I, 25 female, have just wrapped up a very long cross-country road trip. While traveling, we naturally encountered traffic jams and during some of the more abrupt stops, he put on the hazard lights of the car while braking. I brought it up that I find it kind of weird that he does this and maybe it isn't necessary. I guess beyond the fact that I've never heard of someone else doing this, I worry about other drivers around us. I told him, what if the person behind you takes it the wrong way? But that's probably me overanalyzing. I don't know, but doesn't it seem like it's a bit too much? He got frustrated with me for being a backseat driver and asked me to stop nitpicking his driving. I get that. I guess I just still think it's weird. So, am I the jerk? Do people think this is normal? For clarification, we both live in the US. He grew up in the Midwest. I'm from the East Coast, and we were mostly on major highways during our drive. You're the jerk. I drive professionally and I see this all the time and I do it myself when the situation calls for it. It's not weird at all and very much appreciated at times. 
It tells the car behind you that you're not just braking to adjust your speed a bit, but that something unusual is going on. If the sight line is a bit blocked because you're coming around a curve, or there's some larger vehicle in front of something, it can be hard to immediately tell that there's a stop or buildup of traffic coming up. But if the hazards come on, you know right away to drop the accelerator and start braking yourself. Once another vehicle is behind you at the lower speed, you can drop the hazards. He's right. You're being a backseat driver and nitpicking what he's doing right. You're the jerk. I'm from the US, but learned to do this when I was in the military while living in several other countries where traffic incidents are considerably less common. It lets other drivers know that traffic is stopping abruptly, especially with all the idiots out there not paying attention. It's super useful. I'm wondering if maybe he's traveled a little more than you and he's had more experience with that sort of thing. Hazard lights are for hazards, like abruptly stopping traffic. Maybe try to keep an open mind and learn a little instead of just digging in your heels and doing a, well, I don't do it, so it's weird. That mindset is super weird to me, to be honest. This comment section is insane. According to the highway code, you should mainly use hazard lights when your vehicle is stationary on the road and a potential hazard to other road users. This can occur if your vehicle is broken down, if you've had to stop because of another obstruction ahead, or if you've pulled over for another emergency reason. Seriously, I've never even heard of or seen people do this in my entire life, yet apparently everyone here says you're supposed to do it. I'm pretty sure in most, if not all, states, you're not supposed to do it. No jerks here. I've been driving for over 30 years on the West Coast and the East Coast. If there's a condition not apparent to other drivers, then of course hazards should be on. But I was not taught to put on hazards in a traffic jam, and to my knowledge, I've not seen anyone else do this. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing it, but I don't understand those calling OP a jerk for mentioning it to her boyfriend. I've never seen this done and never heard of anyone doing it. I'm kind of surprised at all the comments saying how common it is. I'm not reaching to turn my hazards on and off every time I have to break in traffic. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or her boyfriend? Please let us know. My dad found his biological parents and it turns out they've been searching for him for 56 years. As you would expect from the title, my dad, who's 56, was adopted at birth. He was raised in eastern Canada and never really searched for his birth parents. The people who raised him are his parents to him and he loves them very much. They've always been amazing grandparents to my sister, who's 19, and to myself, who's 22, male. All he had from his birth parents was a letter, which told him that he was born out of love, but they could not support him when he was born. So when my sister decided to get him a genetic test for Christmas, it was purely with the intention to find out what ethnicity we all are, and the thought of finding his birth parents didn't even cross our minds. Eventually, when we got his results, we were surprised to find the names of two people with perfect genetic matches to my dad. He had the option to reach out to them, so he wrote them each an email and just waited for their responses. Almost immediately, his biological dad, who I'll call Jim, responded. He said how excited and happy he was to have found my dad and how he was looking for him for so long. My dad, who's usually an emotionally reserved man, was curled up on the couch grinning as he was texting Jim for the first time. I was still in shock from the news, but was so happy to see my dad even happier than when I graduated. Soon after, he also received a message from his biological mom, Debbie. By talking to them both, my dad learned the story of his birth, and I think that it's absolutely wild. Debbie is the daughter of an Australian mining engineer, and they all moved to Canada for his work when she was in high school. Later on, they moved to the Midwest, where she met Jim at the age of 17. They were high school sweethearts and were thinking of marriage after they graduated, but then Debbie got pregnant. This being the 60s, this was a huge deal. Her dad was furious and sent her back to Canada to give birth and arranged a private adoption as he knew a couple who were trying to have a kid, my grandparents. Once she gave birth, she was able to let Jim know that she was being sent back to Australia. They never saw each other again for the next 40 years. Jim apparently was only able to move on once he received a letter over five years later from Debbie saying that she got married. Eventually, he got married too and they moved to the West Coast but his wife got into an accident and lost the use of both her legs, so they were never able to have kids. Debbie had three daughters in Australia, the oldest which is seven years younger than my dad. They saw each other for the first time around 12 years ago, as they reconnected on Facebook, and Debbie happened to be taking a trip to the west coast of America. Both Jim and Debbie had always wanted to keep my dad, and so they tried for decades to find him. But my province apparently is one of the hardest places in the world to find adoption information especially since my dad only received his birth certificate at his baptism, so their names were not on it. 
Jim had essentially given up trying to find my dad until genetic tests became popular. He asked Debbie to take every single one and he did the same about five years ago and the hopes that one day my dad would take one. When he received my dad's message, he immediately wrote to Debbie, I found him. Since then, we've had several calls with Jim and his wife and they are absolutely lovely. We're their only family since they don't have kids and I couldn't be happier. At the end of the month, we'll be flying to the West Coast to meet them. It's been harder to talk to Debbie as Australia is so many hours ahead of us, but she also is so kind and an absolute joy to talk to. I haven't met my three new aunts yet, but apparently one lives in London. It's crazy to think that I might have been within a few kilometers of her the few times I visited. I also have five new younger cousins. A couple of them are huge fans of Japanese culture, so they're ecstatic to hear that they have half Japanese cousins. My mom is Japanese Canadian, so my sister and I are both half. We hope to visit them one day in Australia, but we might all meet up in Japan next year. I don't know how to end this. I'm still processing everything. It's absolutely incredible to have my family grow so much, but also a little overwhelming. I'm so happy for my dad, for Jim, and for Debbie, and I'm also excited to get to know them better. I hope I get to meet my new cousins soon too. I feel so incredibly lucky that this happened, seemingly all against the odds. My dad was initially raised speaking French, so it's a miracle that they even speak the same language. Am I the jerk for telling my boyfriend he should move out of my house? I, 28 female, bought my house five years ago. I got an inheritance from my great aunt who passed and had no kids. I was also saving for a home at that time and was able to buy a house with 20% down and pay off all of my student loans. So I'm very grateful to her for that. I bought a very small house on a big lot which was pretty affordable back in the day as everyone wanted a big house and didn't care as much about the backyard space. My boyfriend, 31 male, and I moved in together a year ago and he pays rent to me but it's much lower than he would pay if he rented somewhere else. He began complaining about how I ran my house like that I hang up my laundry outside on clotheslines and also because I tore out the grass in my front yard to make a wild flower garden and clover lawn. I don't know why he has opinions about what the lawn is made of but he complains that he doesn't like how it looks. It's not even obstructing his hobbies. He doesn't even hang out outside. The big argument came recently from me getting chickens. My city has a backyard chicken program where they grant permits for people to have backyard chickens. I got my permit after applying for three years straight and began looking to get chickens. I spent last summer building a coop. My boyfriend knows how to use tools but refused to help saying it will make the house look like a barnyard. So I did it myself and now he's complaining that he moved in with me to live in a house, not a farm. He claims the chickens will be disgusting but our neighbor got the permit last year and has chickens but there are no weird smells or sounds coming from their yard. Last night I finally got the four heritage breed chickens I was looking for and I told him and he went off on me for not listening to him. I was sick of this and told him to move out since he can't stand to live in a house with chickens in the backyard and he got all quiet and proceeded to ignore me today. I'm starting to think he wants to move out but doesn't want to deal with the high rent somewhere else. He's always telling me because he pays rent he should get a say. Am I the jerk for telling him to move out because he won't let me do as I want on my own property? My house is finally looking like the house of my dreams and I put work in every weekend to do it all myself. I feel like he's now intruding on my paradise and being super critical of everything has me wanting him to leave. I think in a relationship, people do need to communicate and share their vision for their futures. Y'all are not compatible. You want this house and to make it a certain way. He doesn't. It's time to move on for each of you. Not the jerk. My girlfriend refuses to use soap and I've had enough. On our very first date, something I noticed was that she didn't seem very concerned with cleanliness. Something to note is that masks were still mandatory where we lived and so lockdown concerns were still very much a thing. We ended our date by grabbing a snack that she wanted us to bring back to her place. We got there and she immediately started taking everything out without washing her hands. Maybe I'm just a clean freak, but this surprised me a little. I brushed it off until she excitedly tried to get me to try some charcuterie jelly she had. She did this by dipping her finger directly into the jar and holding it out for me to try. At this point, I felt pretty icky about it and jokingly said something like, and get a taste of all that stuff we were touching earlier? We were out and about, public transit, etc. She seemed a little embarrassed but agreed that was a little gross but still didn't wash her hands. This was the first day we knew each other. To this day, I have not witnessed her wash her hands with anything more than water and even that takes me asking her to do it multiple times. 
She'll just go about her whole day, use the washroom, etc. without washing her hands. She loves finding treasures when we're walking around, like abandoned toys, household stuff, clothes, etc., even if they are visibly very dirty. She touches everything and anything, doesn't wash her hands. She also showers maybe twice a week, doesn't use soap there either. The only time she washes her hair or uses soap to clean herself is when I literally do it for her, which she says she enjoys. This wouldn't bother me so much if it weren't for a few things. She likes to cook for me. We love to dip our fingers into jars and we drink straight from bottles instead of using silverware and cups. She touches my face a lot and to be honest, she stinks. And on to my main point, she is always sick. She tends to be very sensitive and gets upset if she thinks that I'm implying that she's gross in any way. So I try to be as gentle as possible when encouraging her to clean herself. Eventually, I guess I got fed up when she was complaining about being sick again. And I told her that maybe the reason she keeps getting sick is because her hygiene isn't very good. She got very quiet and cried a bit. And now she thinks that I think she's disgusting and cries whenever I bring up washing hands or anything like that. She used to just laugh and brush it off but now she seems to be really upset by it. I don't know what else to do. I feel like a jerk, but I don't think I did anything wrong either. Edit. I'm getting a lot of the same questions in the comments, so I'm adding the answers here. Have you ever asked why she doesn't want to wash or why she doesn't like soap? Yeah, and she usually just brushes it off with humor or starts crying. The little information I've been able to gather is that her parents were kind of neglectful by not really teaching her about this kind of stuff. She also used to be bullied for being the smelly kid at school, and past partners have called her gross. She claims to not like the soap I have, even though I have several different types. Bar, liquid, unscented baby soap. You're gross too for being with her. Well, yeah, I feel gross when I'm around her. I always change my sheets after she leaves. I clean everything. I can usually get away with not eating what she cooks, as I'm vegetarian and she usually cooks with meat. The odd time she cooks something vegetarian, I'll insist on doing the veggie cleaning and chopping and dump it in the pan or whatever for her, so minimal touching on her part. I know a lot of people don't wash their hands often, but I've always washed mine frequently and I sanitize my phone every day. I don't like feeling this way, but the way she reacts makes me feel like I'm overreacting. If I knew she was like this on the first date, why did I keep dating her? Why are you monitoring her bathroom habits so closely? You're a creep. It's one of those things that sort of builds up over time and you don't really see how bad it is until you're deep into it. I knew her hygiene wasn't 100% right away, but I didn't know it was literally non-existent until we started spending prolonged periods of time at each other's places and using the bathroom with each other in the room versus alone with the door closed. Then I'd see that she didn't use soap when she took a shower. After going to the bathroom, she would just rinse her hands with water, etc. She complains that she doesn't like the soap I have, but I tell her to try the other kinds then. She must be okay with one of them, but no. She just hates using soap, period. Update. Most of you were really nice about it, but the consensus seemed to be that she needs therapy and I'm gross if I stay with her. And yeah, I feel gross and I don't want to feel that way. I gave it a lot of thought and I realized that my boundaries basically became non-existent in this relationship. I keep letting things slide that I really don't want to. I'm allowing myself to be uncomfortable for her sake and I've done this in the past, but I don't want to do it anymore. So yeah. I decided I'd be very direct with her and we either get on the same page or I'm done. So I plainly asked her why doesn't she like to wash herself. She cried, sobbed about how gross I think she is, but I asked her again and eventually she told me that she just likes when I do it for her. She wants to feel pampered and cared for. Honestly, I can't believe that I put up with this for so long. She's a really great girl otherwise, but yeah, this is a deal breaker for me. I told her this and that I don't want to have to do this for her and she just absolutely broke down. Seems to be a deal breaker for her too. She wants someone who will treat her like a pampered pet. So we are done. Anyways, thanks guys. I can't believe how this ended up, but I guess I'm happier for it. I will never ignore bad hygiene again. Am I the jerk for leaving a note on my neighbor's doorstep about his screaming kids? I've had many neighbors come and go and I've never had any noise issues. However, last year a new neighbor moved in three units down. He's about 40 and has three kids under the age of four. For months I've listened to his kids scream and cry all day long, whether it be in his apartment or in the hallway. At first I tried to ignore the behavior as I felt bad. It appeared he was a newly single father and was struggling. However, as time went on, 
it became clear that he just straight up lets his kids behave however they want. For example, when they shriek at the top of their lungs in the hallway or right outside my door, he never says, shh, let's be quiet, or anything at all. He just lets it happen without a peep. Additionally, I've come to realize the frequency and the volume of the screaming, crying, and shrieking is way beyond what's normal. I'd venture to say I hear it anywhere from 10 to 15 full-on tantrums every single day, all of which are ear-piercingly loud. And like I said, he does not say or do anything about these tantrums. It's now at the point where I find myself frustrated and annoyed in my own home all the time. Right now, I'm working on a paper in my apartment and I can't even concentrate because all I can hear are his kids. Because of this, I wrote a note, a polite note, and left it on his doorstep. Essentially, my note said that I sympathized with him, but the noise is out of control. I also stressed that I wanted to confront him directly first. I realize this sounds hypocritical since I left an anonymous note, rather than going straight to the management. Am I the jerk for leaving this note? Should I have handled it differently? You're the jerk. What do you think he's going to do with three kids under the age of four? Spend the day elsewhere? Buy earplugs. OP. I don't know. Maybe tell his kid to be quiet when she's shrieking in the hallway at the top of her lungs for no reason? And apologize to the neighbors who opened their doors to see what the commotion was about? You assume he hasn't tried to quiet the kids and is also unaware of their screaming. OP. Considering he wears headphones all day while he games, no. I don't think he has the pleasure of hearing them scream all day like the rest of us do. How do you know? OP. Because he told my husband that he's an avid gamer and games pretty much all day long. He's also a tech geek and retired. He sold some sort of major software. You're the jerk. What do you think your note will accomplish? Tantrums are normal. OP. According to professionals, it's actually not normal for kids to have that many tantrums in a 24-hour time span. A kid's behavior has a direct relationship with their environment and how they are parented. It's not something that's 100% dependent on their natural temperament. Update. After reading the comments on my original post, I decided to remove the note before my neighbor saw it. I took what some of you said into consideration. Perhaps I just needed to be more patient. I decided if the noise issue escalated, then I'd do something. Otherwise, I'd just suck it up and use headphones like some of you advised. Well, today, his kids screamed and shrieked four times within a one-hour period in the hallway. This was right by my door, about two feet away from my apartment. The fourth time it happened, I opened my door and said, Please don't scream in the hallway, guys. Once I said this, he told me that his kids are allowed to scream in the hallway or anywhere else in the building that they feel like. I told him that actually, no, they're not, according to our lease. He then told me to suck it up and to contact management and to not talk to him. After our conversation, he told all three of his kids, you can be as loud as you want in here, and then gave me a nasty look and proceeded to walk to the stairs. Once he said that, all three kids started squealing, <laughs> squealing as loud as possible, on purpose. I sent management an email, and they're talking to him first thing in the morning. I know some of you suggested I do this in the first place. I wish I did. Update. I just went down to management office today to follow up with the manager. She said she had a meeting set for today at 1 with the resident. She immediately contacted him when I emailed her last night. But then today, he emailed her saying he could no longer make the 1 p.m. meeting and asked why he had to come down. He's in his apartment right now doing nothing. He doesn't work. She told him he's in violation of his lease and it's best if he comes down. Apparently, he didn't reply to her. She told me that if he doesn't come down to meet with her, she's going to draft an official lease violation letter and begin the process of eviction. I was blown away. She's a great manager. She told me that his reaction, telling me his kids are allowed to yell and telling the kids to keep yelling, is the reason for how she's handling this not purely the noise complaint. She said she's horrified and disgusted that somebody would handle the situation that way. Her and I both agreed that it was strange he would encourage me to not speak to him and to contact management, rather than just simply telling his kids to stop screaming and appreciating I said something to him directly. After I talked with management, I saw my neighbor bring his kids to their mother's house. He's been in his apartment alone for the last few days and hasn't come out. He has all the blinds drawn, he posted the following status on social media. I am the perfect success in all areas of my life. My husband follows him, which is how I know this. I think he's pretending he's not home to avoid both myself and management. I don't know what to make of it, and I don't plan on getting involved. My personal theory is that up until this year, he's never had to take care of his kids. A nanny has, 
so parenting is really new to him and he has no clue as to what's normal and what's not. I think he likes making his kids happy, so he never says no or stop. I don't think he has a clue what he's doing. A few weeks ago, he was at the pool with them and they were all shrieking and he seemed so oblivious that it was a problem. It wasn't until he saw other parents saying, stop yelling to their own kids that it seemed to click in his head and they abruptly left the pool. I don't know why he couldn't translate that experience into, maybe my kids shouldn't yell in the hallways. More info about my neighbor. In general, he's a friendly guy, but really awkward. He's not very talkative and avoids social interaction. For example, if somebody else takes the elevator, he starts walking in the other direction towards the stairs. However, sometimes he's stuck socializing when he clearly doesn't want to, since we live in an apartment building. My husband is extremely outgoing and social. Me, not so much. So he's been able to have quite a few conversations with him over the past year. I only had an actual conversation with him once. I never assumed he would react the way he did. If anything, he seemed like the type who would be meek and embarrassed when confronted, so I was super surprised by his reaction. So was my husband. In addition to his post about being perfect, he made another post saying, overthinking is a disease. I honestly think the guy is just really socially inept. Update. I'm assuming management got in contact with him, either in person, over email, or via paper notice, and notified him that he violated his lease and he needs to fix the issue or else he'll be evicted. And I'm assuming he said okay, but I don't know for sure. I haven't heard his kids scream in the hallway since the incident, which is relieving. However, the other day we were both in the hallway at the same time. He had taken the stairs and I had taken the elevator and made direct eye contact. It was so awkward. Neither of us said anything, just unlocked our apartment doors in silence. Although, when he opened his door, his kids were screaming at the top of their lungs inside. I just laughed at myself and went inside. He can deal with the screaming in his apartment all he wants. I'm just glad I don't have to hear it in my hallway anymore. Hopefully. Do this next. Tap here on your screen to come see our new podcast playlist, where you'll find thousands of hours of the best stories you've ever heard. Or tap the one on the right. That episode is specifically just for you, based on other videos you've enjoyed the most.